So there's been a lot of debate out there whether you need to re-gear your Jeep JL or Gladiator's 8-speed transmission. I'm not going to dive into that debate, but we're going to re-gear it and we're going to see if we can improve the gas mileage or not. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad and I'm here with my buddy Ryan hey. and we are going to be doing something very interesting today. We're going to be doing a real world gas mileage test with the Jeep Gladiator. We're going to re-gear it and then we're going to go test it out again and see if we get any improvements because Ryan, we were in Alaska on the ultimate adventure recently. We were driving a Jeep JL on 40s and getting pretty respectable gas mileage. We had a good conversation about, you know, gas mileage and re-gearing. And so we're going to do that with the Gladiator today. And I want to know, man, what do you think the prediction is? How's this all going to play out? This is going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to dive into the science of what gas mileage really is and what are we, what are we doing, right? we got a four-wheel drive. we got an 8-speed transmission. We've got these really cool 3.6 motors that, that uh, make all kinds of new technology um, brimming at the seams, right? Yeah. These are neat platforms forms and we'll get to the nitty-gritty of why we're getting what mileage we are and what's what happens when we change gears yeah for sure so I think it's gonna be interesting to see how it all works today so we're gonna to do a standard course today once we do the gears then we'll do that standard course again and I'm all outfitted here I've got the 38 inch tires we're lifted two and a half inches and I've got the rooftop tent and all the gears so we're doing this real world test guys I don't know what do you think the prediction gas mileage is gonna be oh man so since we already have the JL we know what that got yeah. um, I say that the JT is heavier, it's, it takes a bigger profile going down the highway. I'm going to say on the highway we're going to get 19 on flat ground, and I'm going to say um, all up total trip that we're going to get 16. Okay. Well, I hope we get a little bit of improvement in gas mass. Let's go do this, man. This is going to be fun today. And to keep things consistent with how we're filling it up, uh, we're going to go one more extra click past when it shut off. There we go. That's it. All right, Ryan, we just left the gas station and you've already got me on this beautiful back road. You selected the route for this trip. Where right. are we going? All right, so we started in East Lake, and that's the other end of Chula Vista, and we're jumping on Highway 94, and we're gonna head out to Old Highway 80, and in that route, we got a lot of hills, we got a lot of country roads, but there's not a lot of cross traffic, and we'll be able to maintain the speed limit for our test. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah, because I'm, look, I, I admittedly have a heavy foot, so it's tough uh, <laughs> keeping it dialed on the speed limit, but we're gonna do that because we're hypermiling today. That's right. Talk a little bit about hypermiling. I know there's some things in my head, but you, you, it's something you practice all the time. I practice hypermiling all the time. When you drive a full-size vehicle, and it's always crazy because the manufacturer says, well, you're gonna get 25 miles to the gallon, you're like, eh, that's yeah. not really gonna happen, right? Because right? the first thing you're gonna do is jackrabbit start from every street light to street light. And so what we do is we practice hypermiling by reducing the amount of gas pedal. So I try to press the gas pedal down in five seconds to the speed that I'm looking for on city streets. I also watch that gauge very, very close on where that thing is going. And so if you're down in the single digits, and let's say you're getting 10 miles to the gallon on that gauge, and, and then you push a little harder, you get nine miles to the gallon, you actually lost 10% at that one moment. Yeah. So we gotta try to get those 10% back, right? And so that's when you're really hypermiling, you know, the speed limit. Uh, aerodynamics takes a huge factor on a pickup truck. So going down the highway, the wind is blowing on that vehicle. The faster you go, the less gas miles you're gonna get. Four wheel drives in particular, the first thing we do is put big tires on them and we lift them. But we expose the whole bottom of the vehicle to all kinds of new condensed air and that hot air has gotta go somewhere. So it spills out the side, which makes the envelope of the vehicle wider, changing the um, laminar flow down the side of the vehicle. And Chrysler spent a ton of time in the, in the wind tunnel trying to get this vehicle to get to 20 miles a gallon. Right, well, and I should point out that we are 6.2 miles in we're at 20.6 nice. miles a gallon now we're only doing 40 miles an hour on this little back road but that's pretty legit yeah absolutely i'd say so a lot of conversations when i first got this about the auto start feature on the jl platform and the gladiator platform what are your thoughts on how much that starter is having to turn on and off so my gut instinct says i hate it and because <laughs> i have changed some starters in some remote places and been super pissed off right. about it um so they're not using the starter the way they were using the starter. So they've, they've actually balanced out where the pistons stop at. And so the starter's not starting nearly as hard as it was. Okay. So it's, it's way less aggressive on it. And now 
um, 2020, they'll have the V6 with the e-torque electric motor bolted to the side. They'll be using that electric motor to start the engine. Uh -huh. And so every time it sh shuts off or starts back on, it's not going to the, the starter motor starter. Uh, I gotcha. And that's why like, it doesn't even make a sound on a lot of new vehicles when you step on the gas and, the, and just rolls away yeah. because it's rolling away on electric motor and then the engine starts up. Yeah, that's awesome. A yeah. lot of people ask me, doesn't that bother you that it's starting and stopping all the time? And it, and it was something I noticed quite a bit when I first got it, but honestly, I don't even really notice it anymore. I just notice it when the AC goes away. Yeah, there's that. Okay, so I just added the 38 inch tires uh, and everybody wants to upgrade their tires to larger ones when they get their vehicle and when they're off-roading. Um, but it really complicates things and that's why we're re-gearing and that's right. why we're talking about gas mileage. How does that larger rotating mass affect gas mileage? So by changing the diameter of the tire, right, you've obviously thrown off the ratio of the vehicle. The big problem that most people don't know about tires is when you step on the gas, you gotta get all this rolling resistance up and spinning. So once you get it spinning and you're going down the highway, it doesn't care about the rolling resistance. Right. But what you actually do gain is it will roll over those smaller bumps easier because it's a larger platform. It's a, it's a longer footprint that it's casting down the highway. Yeah. Um, we talked earlier and it was the Sprinter van is such a large vehicle and it's a tiny little 15 inch rim with a 225 tire on it because they don't wanna spin that tire up to speed uh, that fast or they don't want to stop it you know they reduce the diameter of the tire makes it brake easier and so that's probably one of the next things we'll do after we do the gears is then we'll work on the braking a little bit yeah for sure i know uh, on my jk when i upgraded the tire size uh the braking was awful afterwards and so upgrading the brakes was really important not such a significant difference on this jeep just because it already has the dual pistons but i think there's definitely some room for improvement now with these larger tires that's right and what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a larger rotor on there and we'll take your factory dual piston caliper we'll move it out so that it's got uh, more leverage on the brake system right so brad have you ever been to the desert tower i have driven past it many times but i've actually never been here this place is full of a lot of eclectic neat stuff the um the curator will tell us the story on how this place came to be but uh it's pretty amazing well this is our turnaround spot so this is kind of a cool place to turn around yeah this this works great all right where have you taken us so this is the desert tower and the desert tower has got a cool history that comes along with the road that goes through um in the old days you had to go through basically uh, there's a stage route that runs up the back side of this and this was always a watering stop and this was a cooler elevation Once you got the temperature change you were probably in a Model A right in the 1900s trying to get up this hill You needed a water stop so you got to get radiator water and go Well when the new team came in to build the new road and it was less curved less grade more asphalt uh, The team needed a place to stay so they stayed here on the property Well they went to Yuma and they stole the plank road and they used the boards to build this building out of just stuff they could find in the desert. This well, is pretty neat. It's pretty cool. Good little stop. Okay, Ryan, so one thing that I get accused of all the time is my vehicle's too heavy. And look, <laughs> uh, I, I don't take everything but the kitchen sink, but I do take some luxury items and they sure. do add weight to the vehicle right. and anything, you know, tires and bumpers and all that stuff, but the rooftop tent and everything adds a lot of weight to the vehicle and I know that and it's something I'm thinking about all the time. But Let's, you got you got a Gladiator, so you can carry more stuff, right? I got a Gladiator, the truck, so it would hold a little more than my Wrangler because she's a big girl. Uh, but it's still something that you know it's it's heavy on my on my mind about how much weight I'm adding to the vehicle. Let's talk a little bit about that. All right, so weight when you're going down the highway doesn't make much difference because once you've accelerated all this weight to speed, it's really aerodynamics is in full effect, okay. right? So you're trying to break through the, you know, um, a lot of people don't talk about this, but if you pull up next to a semi truck, there's a bow wave of air that's hitting the front of your vehicle. That's a place you don't drive. Um, but if you get past that, then it's back to this vehicle could be 7,500 pounds going down the highway, still getting 20 miles to the gallon as long as it's perfectly flat. Once you introduce the hill to it, all of a sudden that weight's a factor. You're trying to carry all of this gravity, you know, is, is now against you, right? Now turn that around, gravity is with you when you're going downhill and you're gonna get all those hyper miles back, but you have to stop it at the bottom. So you have to be really careful when you carry a lot of weight that you could over, out, overstep the bounds of the braking system, overstep the bounds of the tire rating on the sidewall, right? right. And, the, and the springs. So we have, to, we have to be inside the margins of what 
um, Chrysler deemed acceptable, and then we need to make those upgrades appropriate so that we fix the brakings, we fix the springs, and we fix the vehicle to be compliant to the new weights that we're adding to the vehicle. There is an interesting thing that happens that people never talk about, and it's sprung weight and unsprung weight. Mm -hmm. And I know you understand what I'm talking about, but for people that are just paying attention now, the unsprung weight is the axle, and the axles don't have any spring pressure against them. It has the weight of the vehicle sitting on them. And so when you're talking about payload, you're talking about overloading the springs and overloading the shocks. Um, you're not necessarily overloading the axle per se because the weight that you added to the vehicle with a set of like Core 44s or set of Dana 60s was all down low. Right. So your your bigger brakes, your bigger tires, your bigger wheels, and your bigger axles are all weight down low. You could add up 1,500 pounds and not have to change the OEM spring. Yeah. So weight does matter for gas mileage, big time. Right. Uh, and I will point out that we are slowly dropping uh, the more we're going up and down the hill. We're down to 15.8 miles per right. gallon. We were on Interstate 8 for many miles back to the gas station. We had a few climbs and descents, and we kept in the slow lane pretty much the whole way. We watched the miles per gallon change a few times, but it was really starting to settle out as we got back to the starting point. One click. Done. Alright, you want to mark to get the funnel? Okay, so uh, that was a great trip. Absolutely. Uh, nice man. little road trip, man. Right? A couple of cool stops and yeah. yeah. Uh good not bad results for a nice. Jeep on 38s with Honestly, I'm surprised. 16 miles a gallon. That was serious. Uh, 177 miles, so that's our benchmark. We're gonna do 177 miles, so we'll do the same route again. Uh, Minor changes. We'll do a couple different stops, but the same amount of mileage, the right. same uh, back roads and freeways. Start at the same gas and end at the same gas. Yes, exactly. That's right. uh, but a couple different stops, which will make things interesting. Now, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's going to be a couple days, but we're going to go do gears, and we decided 488s, 513s, 538s? Yes. 513s, I think. 513s, is, I think, is it. It's ready to go, mm -hmm. and hopefully when we roll back, which for you guys will be just a short period of time. For us, it's probably going to be about a week or two. That's right. We'll do the gas mileage test again, and we'll see how and it goes. And we'll talk more about how we picked 513s. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ryan works at the Four Wheel Parts Engineering Shop where we did the ring and pinion install. They do a lot of very cool research and development for off-road products at this facility here in Chula Vista, California, and I always love going out there and checking out the cool stuff they're up to. His team installed the front and rear 513 ring and pinion gears from G2. Doing a ring and pinion install is a labor-intensive and technical project that I always recommend you leave to the professionals. But if you get the opportunity to help out and watch, I fully recommend it. You'll learn a lot about your axles, which may help you if you ever need to do a repair out on the trail. I took the opportunity to disassemble the front axle disconnect for my first time, and I was glad I did because now I really have a good understanding about how it all works. It's actually a very simple design with just two axle shafts, a coupler that slides on and off them with a C-clip. It was easy enough to disassemble and reassemble. It did take a few fitments to finally get the ring and pinions all dialed in, but once completed, I was sure to do a good break in of the gears and change the diff fluid after 500 miles. A big thanks to Four Wheel Parts Engineering for helping me out with this project. Well, good morning, buddy. Hey, is this like day three of this project? <laughs> day three, two months, fast that's, forward. That's right. So we have fast forwarded two months since we did the original test uh, and got the gears installed about two weeks ago now. Right. And so today we're gonna go out and uh, see how the Jeep has improved, talk about the gas mileage. I think it's important to mention um, that this is not like a scientific test. That's right. We're not on a closed course. This is just a general, like how it feels, how the gas mileage improves. But I did kind of put the Jeep back to exactly the way it was two months ago, good, even though a good start. I've already made some changes. Yeah. Uh, but there's some good stuff to talk about and uh, I'm excited oh. to see how the gas mileage goes. Can we talk about some of the things you've noticed right away? Well, I'll tell you right now, stepping on the gas, much improved. Awesome. awesome. Significantly improved. So I'm happy about that. Nice. Well, let's get to it. Let's do it. Man, this is such a beautiful drive out here. You know, I like being on the trail, but it's not bad to be on a nice country road Absolutely. like this. Absolutely. So the biggest thing that I noticed 
right out of the box is stepping on the gas. The acceleration is much improved. But one thing that uh, we didn't have going when we first did the test is I didn't realize you could put the gear indicator on the display. Oh yeah, yeah, I completely forgot about yeah. that. So we didn't do that on the original test. So we never knew what gear we were in. But after I realized that before we installed the gears, I did do that and I noticed that uh, eighth gear was never seen. Right. Like I didn't see 8th gear unless I was going down a hill. Uh, it lived pretty much in 6th, sometimes 7th if I was at the right speed on a flat spot in the freeway. But since re-gearing the 513s, I mean, I'm living in 8th gear on the freeway. You know, it'll downshift to 7 sometimes uphill. So it's very noticeable. Uh, it's, I don't know how much it's going to improve the gas mileage. We'll find out today. <laughs> uh, but it's been nice to see 8th gear because I feel like it was just gone before. And essentially, since that's an eight-speed transmission with two overdrives, right. you are never really getting into the final overdrive. But what we did is we gave you back two more first gears, right? Yeah, exactly. By moving the, the gear selection down to the bottom. Yeah. So that makes it definitely more spunky around town. Yeah, it's been it's been fun driving it again. I'm enjoying it. Now, how's that on the trail? On the trail is great. We actually did uh, Gold Mountain Trail, which was a difficult trail. First time I had this on a difficult trail. And uh, up in the snow playing and crawling up on some rocks. And oh, it was great. It performed really well. Nice. All right, we had to make one stop because we were driving along and uh, Ryan says, oh, that's a great taco that's shop. Right. I'm like, dude, breakfast burrito. Absolutely. These things are like 10 pound at breakfast least, burritos. At least. But you gotta stop when there's good food in the area. And I'm starving, dude. This looks great. <laughs> Pretty good. Worth the stop. Mm -hmm. And of course, we couldn't eat the whole things, so our leftovers went on the manifold to keep them warm so we could enjoy them later. Okay, Ryan, so a question that I know a lot of folks are going to have, and I want to try to put this in as much layman terms as we can. Sure. How does swapping out the gears affect my crawl ratio? Okay, that's a... You know, that can be totally complicated or we can simplify it. We need so, to simplify it. Okay. So we're going to start at the transmission's first gear and the transfer case multiplied together, and that's torque multiplication. Okay. And that came up with about 20 to 1 is what we started with, right? And so originally you had 373s or 410s? I had 410s in here. Okay. And so the, the math come out to about 82 to 1 with a 4 to 1 ratio um, was our total crawl ratio. Okay. Um, once we put the 513s in there, we did like 103 to 1. Yeah. So that's huge. The torque multiplication, all it does is make that horsepower so much easier to move the vehicle. Right. So when I'm on the trail, I'm on an obstacle, I step on the gas, how does that improve? Like, what's happening? Oh, so there's, there's a bunch more engine RPMs before the tire will even right. move. And the greatest thing about that is when you put your vehicle on an obstacle, you want to move the tire microscopically to get as much traction so the tread opens up to really grab that obstacle. Exactly. So now when I'm out on the trail, it's going to be a little nicer going over those rocks. That's right. Absolutely. So Ryan, last time when we drove past here, we saw all these cool trucks. Right, right. And I was like, oh man, we got to go there. It was closed. It's open this time. We are in Campo, California at the Motor Transport Museum and there are some amazing old classic rigs and parts and engines around here it's focused on old trucks yeah. mainly and a, a lot of them are extra cabs and crew cabs that you never even knew existed it's yeah. a really cool place to stop by yeah yeah really cool place so they're doing some restorations inside the barn and there's just i think we just need to we'll walk around the field check it yeah, out and then absolutely. we'll hit the road and finish this gas by testing thing going but this is fun you know we got to get a little breakfast burrito we got to check out some of the local stuff this is what and we do if you want to stop by the museum they're open on saturdays and every fourth sunday of the month right can you believe it's been almost four months since we were in Alaska? That was a fun trip. Oh, dude, unforgettable. Uh, okay, so that 2018 JL that we had on 40s, 538 gears, got close to 20 miles to the gallon. On perfectly flat ground, it did. Yeah. Why do you think that got so much better gas miles than I'm getting here? My honest opinion is when they told us that we were going to have huge gas gaps in Alaska, I chose not to mount any exterior lights, no roof racks, no rooftop tents, nothing that was going to aerodynamically impair the vehicle as it was. Yeah. Unlike the significant amount of <laughs> wind resistance that I have on this thing, the rack and the lights and the tent. You got what, a Pro 6 and a, and what yeah. did you say, it was 16 inches taller than the factory vehicle? Yeah, yeah, the tent, the yeah, tent yeah, sits yeah. up about 16 inches. I but, think you're taking a penalty on that. Well, table. I'm going to go low profile here soon, but uh, that should help. But definitely aerodynamics are a big part of the gas mask, because even though that was on 538 gears, it's getting better to gas mask. Yeah, and 40s. And 40s.
another beautiful day for a drive, man. Thanks for uh, spending the time with me to do this. Yeah, this has been good. It's been awesome. And visiting that museum, dude, I could have spent hours there. Oh, man, I could spend all day looking yeah, at old trucks. Yeah, so much cool stuff. If you guys have not uh, been there before, definitely it's worth going out there. Okay, so, uh, what, two months ago we did this? Right. Mile per gallon, 16 for the total trip. That's right. Uh, 177 miles. Today's gas mileage, the same route, 17 point I'm impressed. I am straight up impressed. Come I mean, on. The, the the aerodynamic envelope is not great on no, this vehicle. not at all. No. Yeah. But you're talking about like this guy, 10 mile to the gallon, <laughs> right. no matter what you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I honestly, you know, I'm very happy with the acceleration increase. Yeah. But man, to add a little more gas mileage, and look, if it would have been 0.5, we could have said, ah, uh, margin fudge of factor. error, it's fudge factor, no big deal. But an extra 1.3 miles per gallon is significant. That's a little extra range. Uh, I think it's definitely. I'm look, thinking over a long-term trip when you're talking about maybe a two or three thousand mile trip. Yeah. You know that's going to put pennies in your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So there you go, guys. Look again. Not a scientific little project we did. Just kind of having some fun and making some stops along the way. But we tried to do the best we could with, right. with the situation. And so I think that's a legitimate test. And we can say that upgrading to 513 gears didn't kill the gas mileage, and we probably got a pretty nice little gain so there you have it all right now dude uh, we got these things off the manifold i'm ready to <laughs> eat these now because we didn't finish our breakfast so we're going to chow down on these uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video if you're visiting trail recon for the first time hit that subscribe button i'd love to have you as a member of the trail recon team thanks for watching